October 5th marks James Bond Day and the Cinematic Spy's 60th birthday, commemorating the day the first 007 film, Dr. No, had its world premiere in 1962. Back in 1961, American producer Albert Covey Broccoli wanted to adapt Ian Fleming's best-selling spy novels for the big screen. Broccoli teamed up with Canadian producer Harry Saltzman, who had optioned the rights for the series, and got financing from United Artists, raising $1 million to make the first film with Sean Connery. The two producers had actually wanted Thunderball to be the first Bond movie, but ran into copyright issues which led them to begin the franchise with Dr. No. The decision paid off, and then some. To date, the Bond films have collectively grossed an estimated $7 billion, not adjusting for inflation, proving that Goldfinger isn't the only one with the Midas touch. Staying true to Fleming's novels, James Bond's world has also become synonymous with luxury, and a number of high-end brands and organizations are taking part in this year's 60th anniversary milestone. Christie's held a charity auction for a number of authentic Bond costumes, famous cars, and other gadgets used in the films. Among the notable items, the Aston Martin DB5 stunt replica from No Time to Die, which sold for £2,922,000. An Omega Seamaster watch worn by Daniel Craig in his final appearance as Bond, which went for £226,800, well above the 15 to 20,000 pounds it was estimated to fetch, not to mention the retail price for the watch, which is just over 8,000 pounds. Q's jet boat from Pierce Brosnan's 1999 film The World Is Not Enough sold for 126,000 pounds, well above its estimate of 20 to 30,000 pounds. And a Swarovski crystal mounted Fabergé prop egg from 1983's Octopussy estimated at between 6,000 and 10,000 pounds, far surpassed that range by selling for 327,600 pounds. To celebrate the Scottish heritage of James Bond's father, the Macallan is marking 007's 60th with a collection of six limited edition releases. Each bottle is designed to represent a different decade in the Bond franchise. Though Bond is, of course, usually associated with vodka martinis, the Macallan has become his whiskey of choice in recent films. The Royal Albert Hall in London marked Bond's Big 6-0 with a charity Sound of 007 concert on October 4th. Performers included the original Bond recording artists Dame Shirley Bassey, Lulu, Chrissy Hine, and Garbage, along with the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra. And Dancing with the Stars kicked up its heels in celebration this week with Bond Night, featuring dances to many of the film's franchise's most famous theme songs. The Fleming Estate also authorized two new Bond novels in 2022. With a Mind to Kill, the third 007 adventure from novelist Anthony Horowitz was published in May, and a new novel expanding the Bond universe was released in September. Double or Nothing, written by Kim Sherwood, a 32-year-old University of Edinburgh lecturer who was selected by the Fleming estate to write a new trilogy in which Miss Moneypenny is in charge and James Bond is missing. And in a sense, he is, at least on screen. 2021's No Time to Die marked the end of Daniel Craig's tenure on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now, Bond producers Barbara Broccoli, daughter of Covey Broccoli, and her half-brother Michael G. Wilson who have overseen the movie franchise since 1995, faced the billion-dollar task of selecting the next actor to portray James Bond in the movies. But wait, you may be asking, didn't 007, spoiler alert, find time to die in the last movie? Perhaps. But as James Bond fans have learned over the past 60 years, you can live more than twice.